Thanks for having me along today. The PPS has now been in place for about 16 months, so we've got about eight months before the Act well and truly is underway and everything's rolling. The NCI guys suggested to me that this would be a good time for us to get our respective clients together and talk about the lessons that have been learnt over the last 16 months because these lessons give us all an opportunity to work out how we can fine-tune our internal processes and what we can be doing to make sure that we're minimising unnecessary losses into the future. In compiling today's presentation, what I've sought to do is draw on some experiences from the coalface, so to speak. So I've really drawn on five broad categories of experience. First of which is the re review and redraft of terms and conditions of trade. In the last 18 months, we've reviewed and redrafted about 200 sets of terms and conditions of trade, and that's been across a broad range of different industry sectors. This opportunity has allowed us to see where there's common areas of risk across different businesses and to develop strategies to be able to reduce those risks. So I'll be sharing some of those experiences with you today. I'll also be talking about the court cases. There's now been five decided cases which is really useful. What's actually been more useful though is the bigger decisions that, or bigger matters that haven't gone to court and haven't resulted in judgments, but there's been some really, really good lessons out of them and, and they've, Wow Sight and Sound is a classic example of that. We had a situation in Wow which was again one of the bigger or biggest trade credit issues we've seen for PPS to date and there was a lot of money at stake there. We we're acting for one of the trade credit insurers. So we were able to draw on some of those lessons from WOW when pulling this presentation together for you today. The other category of experience I'll be talking about is what I essentially like to call the early saves. The matters that could have ended up in court cases and judgments, but we were able to resolve them without having to actually take legal action. There were, there's been a lot of disputes that we've been acting in against liquidators to allow trade creditors to pursue their PPS rights. And these experiences, although they haven't um, gotten to court, which has been very thankful, it's allowed us to be able to look back and go, all right, what are the strategies that the liquidators are using? How do we counter those strategies from a trade credit perspective? And what are the lessons that we can take out of that as we move forward? The other category of experience is risk assessments. We've, we've done a hell of a lot of these credit agreement reviews We've also found some of our really proactive clients have been saying to us, hey Carl, this is great, these terms are fantastic, but can you come and have a look at how PPS is applying in our business as a whole and where are the holes and, and what are we missing? And those experiences have really allowed us to go in there and see something that looked great, the, the documents are going out, the documents are covering what's required, but there's actually big areas of risk over here that we wouldn't have seen if we hadn't have gotten into our clients' businesses and spent that time with them to be able to cover over the risks proactively. The other category of experience I'm drawing on is um, ad hoc advice. So over the last 18 months, we've had about uh, in excess of 200 clients come to us just for questions and queries about how PS, PPS will apply in their businesses and is applying in their businesses. So I've gone back through and looked at, well, what are the categories of consistent questions that we're getting? What are the good strategies we've been able to come up with? And I've tried to boil that down a little bit in the content that I'm delivering for you today. This has meant that covering over a, a few different key topic areas, one being the transitional provisions, and we've talked a bit about this, we're 16 months in. So how do the transitional provisions apply in practice? And particularly, what are we finding in insolvency scenarios what, what's actually happening there. I'll be talking about real versus personal property interests and the flow over there for when goods become fixtures. I'll be talking about this concept of PIMSIs, purchase money security interests. They're actually one of the most significant rights we have as trade creditors. So I'll talk about what a PIMSI is, but more importantly, how they apply to us in practice. I'll touch on processed and commingled goods because again that's another category of right that we have as a trade creditor. And finally I'll be talking about insolvency tips and traps. The insolvency situation is really the risk that we're all worried about and the reason why we're going to all of this effort to set ourselves up for PPS. So I'll be talking about 
what we're seeing in practice and how insolvency situations impact us as trade creditors.